Hey guys, welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how to get to the Room of Fate after round 4 in the wild. Right now we've got an in-game cutscene that's very loud for some reason with the mama back. Who destroys the teleporter and takes you to the wild if you go through this portal. So basically, in the wild, uh, you'll be able to progress far if you have luck with the keys. Uh, to where you can reach the Rune of Fate on round 5 instead of going uh, and naturally progressing to round 20. So there's a room here to the left that you don't really need to go into. It's not important right for this trick. We have a key right here, which is very good luck. I'm going to step on this stepping stone right here, which brings down a tank and just is going to help our progression. My teammate picked it up there, as you can see. going to go up here. Be careful for the spikes. Definitely take your time if you need. If you're not too experienced with the wild, definitely take your time. Although we're going to try going through uh, quickly, and if we die a few times, we're not really going to be too concerned with it uh, because we're just sort of want to show off this uh, room of fate round five trick. Uh, so we're making our way to the top. Going to enter this dungeon in the top left in a moment once we clear these zombie spawns. These uh, zombie heads with the health bars, once you kill them, the zombies will stop spawning in that specific area shortly there afterwards. So right now, do uh, you think we should clear these things, or just enter the dungeon? I'm just going to use the last bit of the tank you can go in now. Okay, very well. Now we're entering the dungeon here. There's a small chance that a key spawns here, which would be very fortunate. It seems nothing has spawned here. Nope. Now you could explore these dungeons fully, but it's not really necessary, uh, because there's a very small chance of a key. So for the sake of this video, we're just going to leave the dungeon straight away, and hope that we have more keys in more uh, readily apparent areas. So we're going to make our way to the top here, kill some of these barrels, and hope for a uh, sort of key, lucky key spawn. There's a first person drop I could grab there, but it makes my audio really loud. There's sort of a audio imbalance, so I'm just going to avoid those uh, for the time being. I'm going to shoot the zombie spawn. Almost done. Very well. We got an extra life up here. You could also change your camera in the wild and also flip the camera like this. But I'm not going to flip it here. I want to stay in the default view so nobody's confused, including my teammate. Uh, so we're going to make our way right here to a room called the Abandoned Temple. Be careful for spikes right there. Also, zombies spawn up here. Also, some barrels you can shoot here that have items, usually just a piece of silver, nothing too important. And... Gonna shoot the zombie spawn. And we're gonna go up, actually, first, and use a key. And I'll explain why in a moment, but be careful for spikes. Sometimes there's another enemy spawn here, or electric poles. Gonna go through real quick, use my key, unlock that area. Ooh, electric pole almost got me. And I'm gonna take my time here with the spikes. Boom, boom. Alright. So now we're going to enter the abandoned temple. My teammate is about to enter it right now here to the right room with the sort of skull snakes up top. So I'm going to use a nuke here on the bridge actually, which basically makes me invulnerable. I can use my shield to wipe out these elite zombies real quick. Open these chests. Make sure you don't spend your keys on chests that require a key. Like this one, you need a key to open this chest. It's not really worth it uh, if you're trying to get to the room of fate on round 5. So. Just make sure you don't accidentally open a chest by accident and waste the key, because keys are very precious. So my team is going to step on the stepping stone right now. Two paths open, one reaps, suff one reaps suffering, one sows glory. glory. Uh, basically, it's a 50-50 chance. I'm going to go through one of them. There's a door here in the right, one on the left. Fortune favors you, so it gives me a few nukes. Sometimes it gives you a few speed boosts or a few extra lives. If uh, you don't get lucky, it'll actually uh, take your multiplier, your score multiplier away, and also remove some of your equipment. I'm gonna pick up some of these speed boosts. Uh, okay, things are looking swell. Now we're gonna leave the room. Did what we did there, nothing too, too out of the ordinary. I'm gonna change my camera view, because it resets when, uh, when you leave a bonus area. And we're gonna go up here, my teammate has a key, and it's gonna be able to open a door that helps us get to the room of fate. So hopefully, we find more keys after this. There's also an arcade machine spawn that could appear here, but usually you want to avoid arcade machines, at least for now, because there is a bug with them later in the game. 
Uh, so definitely avoid them if possible, at least for the time being. So we're going to have a zombie spawn up here, up ahead. Uh, anything of note, Rios, you would say? We're going to make our way to the flogger, you would say? Yep, we're going to have to pass by two floggers to get to a room called the Kaboom Room. Okay, so hopefully the flogger doesn't kill me. Usually once you get to the flogger... Oh, by the way, we have fireballs here. They don't kill you in one hit. You'll notice that the soldier in your HUD will uh, have a little red mark that indicates that you're damaged. You'll be able to recover over time. Uh, so just be conscious of that. So we're waiting for this flogger to disappear and we have chickens shooting explosives all over the damn place. I can't even see left from right. But I'm making my way through the flogger. Just be careful. Sometimes it bugs out and kills you. So once you get close to the flogger, it usually triggers it to where it uh, starts going. So you just got to wait, which is a bit annoying, but be patient. Zombie spawn up ahead. I think we're going to sort of just avoid that for the time being. Okay. Going to go right. We're going to enter the Kaboom Room. Watch out for this guy. He's from the view of Black Ops 4 map, Ancient Evil. Perseus, a.k.a. something else. I forget his other name, but I think he's called Perse Perseus in, in that game. All right, so we got the bonus room, Kaboom Room. This is helpful as it gives you armory. I'll max out right now, and so is my teammate very well. Also, also unlocking this bonus room makes it a recurring bonus room later in the game, which is helpful. Be careful. Sometimes you leave the bonus area, and this zombie is just standing outside ready to kill you. We're just going to take our time and kill him right now. Uh, you know, not much to say there. My team is going to drop a nuke since we have a bunch of them and just sort of uh, try to get through this as fast as possible. So, ooh, he pushed me back. It also damages your health when he does that. Oh, good point. So before we go there, I'm just going to quickly make note that there's a stepping stone down here that you can stand on in co-op and your team, it'll uh, bring this platform down. Your team could go up and sort of Grab that first person drop up there. And, uh, you know, not not really too useful for what we're doing right now. Oop. I could have went through if I went with you, I'll but I want to be patient. Yes. All right, so my teammate's shooting a spawn up there. I'm going to join him once this flogger uh, goes down. Okay, so we're going to drop off on the water here. And there's actually another deadly dungeon. We're going to hope for a key item here. As such, we got a key. Very fortunate. Also boxing gloves. Which will be useful. And we're going to exit the dungeon. So once you exit the dungeon, there's this water here, which is a bit bugged out. Sometimes it's difficult to swim. You need to sort of ride the edge here, gain some momentum, and swim. You'll swim very slowly. And I'm going to zoom in my camera. You're going to want to go up here and... It'll let you go then. You could go through this area. Now we got an elephant here. We're going to try running past him. It's not necessary to kill him at the moment. Just going to run by. Cars here. Make sure you don't shoot these cars. You could enter them with X. And the elephant could also blow you up. He almost blew me to smithereens. But you could also speed boost with A on Xbox. Or uh, the equivalent button on PlayStation. Uh-oh. Get out of here. I'm going to... Oh. Okay, watch out. Uh, that sucks. I opened the door right there with the, the key, but it then activates spikes which kill you. I'm gonna go push left with my shield. I'm gonna push left, kill these zombie spawns. There might be a key spawn as well in the top. We're gonna check that out right now. Uh, the next room, right? Yeah, okay. To the left here. There's also a couple of spikes here you gotta be careful of, so just be conscious of that. Some chests that we could open. Looks like we didn't get lucky with keys right from this one. Okay, no key up here. Sometimes there's a key spawn up here. You can grab the, the gold if you want. Alright. Yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> Worth noting, there's a... If you make your way all the way to the top of the Room of Fate, there's a bunch of free lives, so not to be too concerned with some deaths at all. So, okay, we're making our way to the right here now. There's going to be a Warden. We have pretty good weapons, so he gets dropped pretty easily. Oh, is there two Wardens, or am I just tripping? Uh, they can be okay. between, like, one and four, I believe. Okay. So there's actually... Uh, we're going to check if there's a key spawn here. Okay. We can see it in the zoomed-out camera view. There's two keys. Very lucky. Wow. We can check this dungeon here uh, first. Yeah, we're going to drop down here. It takes us to a third deadly dungeon. No free life, unfortunately, but there is a... No uh, key here, but there's a free man. We're going to leave. But 
the keys are very RNG dependent, unfortunately, at the moment. So sometimes you might just have to restart if you want to do this room fate trick on round five. Uh, you know, it is a, bun a bit unlucky with the keys, but that's the way it is. So my teammate is going to go down here and pretty much get those two keys that we saw just a minute ago. Uh, just, you know, be careful. And if you end up in the lava, you could actually go up this uh, this ramp here to, to get back. So right now my teammate has two keys. Do you want to go over here and show this area maybe? Yeah. So this area is pretty tricky uh, because there's a lot of lava and also spring pads that launch you across the map and give you full damage. So I'm going to grab first. For, do we need these keys? Should I grab this first person um, or do you need it? To decipher the fates, we'll need one more key. Okay, so we'll let my teammate get this. He's a little better with this trick. And basically, you can walk by this area without taking damage or very minimal damage. Again, make sure you don't open this chest by accident. The spring pad. There's a spring pad right here that you could take if you could see it. A little square with a red symbol here. I can't quite see too well. I'm going to use a speed boost there just to show you guys. And you can actually boost up here, as I did. You don't even need to take the spring pads. Nice. And unfortunately, there was no key there, or what? Yeah, I guess we got unlucky and got no keys on this. We still can check oh, the well. one dungeon, but about it. Yeah, okay. So I'm just wasting my speed boost to get out of here. I'm not trying to waste too much time. If you're playing a serious run, you might want to be more patient with it and not spam armory or waste lives like that. Although we have both nine lives right now, so that's pretty pretty helpful. These uh, dragons have Spitfire. You can walk right underneath them. Open this door with a key. And we're going to have to spend Ooh. another key, unfortunately, up ahead. I haven't seen this guy in here before. Key right here. My teammate is going to spend it. So naturally, you get to this area around 20. After completing round 20, you get teleported to the wild and you start sort of in this area. This is sort of a shortcut. Uh... Well, it's not too much of a shortcut. You're you're only saving a few minutes, but technically you're doing it earlier, which allows you to play with fates. Uh, you know, starting on round five, which is uh, pretty helpful. But if you do it early on round five, it actually makes it to where you can't go to the wild at round twenty. So right here, you can see there's one, uh, two free lives. Sometimes there's one or zero. Basically, for playing co-op, you have one teammate stand on this platform here, and then the other teammates progress at the top, and there's actually a button that brings your teammate up. Uh, but I'll show that a bit later. We're still a bit far away from that. So, zombie spawns. My teammate has gloves. We're just going to push. Nothing really uh, going on. Now I have some boxing gloves. You can grab this gold without falling, usually. Just keep that in mind. You could also flip your camera here to better see the area if you're, the cliff is blocking you. But like I said, I'm going to keep it on the default camera so that uh, nobody's really confused. Fireballs, again, just be conscious of your health bar. Sometimes they hit you and it's not too apparent. Boxing gloves can I hit I think my them. boxing gloves yeah. <laughs> my boxing gloves are deflecting fireballs like um, I'm parrying Hadoukens in Street Fighter or something. So we have an elite zombie here. He's sort of a bit tangy. You just shoot him and he splits into two uh, acid zombies, which are pretty weak. Some ske skeletons, which are also a bit tanky, so don't try to be too cocky and push them. Gonna try to make our way to the, the spawn area here. Uh, zombie spawn area. They seem to have, uh, I believe the zombie spawns have more health if, with the more players you have. Yeah. Two player, you can sort of shoot them pretty easily. Uh, we're gonna wait for this flogger to expire. Also, you could drop off here, which you don't want to do because it'll kill you and or revert your progress. Okay. We had a free life there that we didn't need. Warden might be there. Yeah. Yeah, there might be a warden here. I ran into him. He almost killed me. You can't. You're sort of blocked by the bridge when you're going underneath those dragons. But it didn't matter. Apparently, we got Nova crawlers here. You got to be careful. They can slow you down. Also, if Nova crawlers or any other zombie type runs through their Nova cloud gas, it'll actually make it to where they run at you super fast. So definitely be conscious of that. It's possible that changes in the future. But right now, in the current build of the game, that's a feature. So we're making our way to the top. We're almost there. Uh, we're going to hope for a key, and I'll explain why in a moment. But technically, we can still get to the room of eight even without any more keys. But uh, more on that here in a bit. Okay. 
couple of nukes here. I'm maxed out. Even though I'm maxed out, I can't pick them up. So that's a nice feature that they added to this game. Where you don't pick up armory if you don't need it. Okay, very well. Gonna push up. So we're gonna go left on this bridge here. Is there an enemy here? Yeah, let's kill this warden first. Okay, he's dead. Uh, we're gonna go left here. Just be careful of the spikes and also the the fireballs. Get away from my teammate. He sort of got left left in the dust, unfortunately. All right, and I'm gonna wait for him here because there's gonna be a Nova crawler spawn. And to be honest, I might just nuke it here. I'm not really in the business of dying. I'm gonna drop a bomb and just kill this real quick. You could go down, but I don't think there's really anything too important. Uh, shoot these, maybe we get lucky with a key. Open up these chests. So basically, this is what I was talking about earlier, where you go on the stepping stone, and it'll uh, raise that platform from earlier in this level and help your teammate collect on those uh, free lives, which are sometimes there. So we'll enter this dungeon and hope for a key. Uh, again, very RNG dependent. Seemingly no key, unfortunately. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Now we could explore the rest of the dungeon and hope for a key as well, but we're not really in the business of doing that. It's a very low chance of happening. So we're just gonna progress. So basically, if we're playing a solo or two player game, you'll be able to feed this altar a key. And if you're playing a three player or four player game, you'll need to feed it two keys. And what that does is it reveals distinguishable patterns on the stones in the Room of Fate. So you can actually tell which fate is which depending on the pattern, the shape, sort of characteristics of it, the color, the gems on it. It's very much like Dead Ops Arcade 2 if any of you played that and, and saw my Room of Fate guide for that a couple years ago. If you're playing a three player or four player game, you could also feed this thing one key if you have it and it'll reveal the pattern of just one stone, which isn't too helpful, but one stone pattern is better than none, right? So again, two, solo and two-player, you feed it one key, it reveals all the stone patterns. Three-player and four-player, you feed it two keys to reveal it. If you feed it one key, it'll reveal one of the four stones. So right now, the Room of Fate is bugged on round 20, where uh, basically, I'm not going to spend time explaining it technically, but basically, it is bugged out right now in round 20. But here on round 5, I think it's actually normal, but we currently don't know all the sort of patterns and shapes of the Fates, so I'm not going to rush out a Room of Fate quite a Room of Fate guide quite yet. Uh, we'll move while I talk, I guess. So I'm not going to rush out a Room of Fate guide on that quite yet. And also there might be an update which adds more stones to the Room of Fate to where you could get, you know, choose from any of the six fates rather than just being uh, given four stones at random. And uh, so I'm just going to wait for uh, the round 20 bug to be fixed, I would say, before I make a guide. This video is just more so to show you that you could get to the Room of Fate here after round four which is a bit quicker than doing it to 20, I would say, and lets you play uh, these early rounds with, with Fates as well, which might help some maybe less experienced players, or helps you build lives. As you see, we both have nine lives and eight nukes, which is, I think, a pretty good start. So Nova Crawlers here, just be careful. Okay, very well. We're going to come up here on a little mini boss who's protecting the top, uh, the werewolf from the map Dead of the Night in Black Ops 4. Here in a, in a second. Got some more Nova Crawlers. So we're going to see the wolf here. Unfortunately, I'm slow. We might just nuke it here to get by him. This dude is just camping. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's why you don't want to use speed boost. My teammate uses speed boost and sort of uh, went flying into oblivion. So basically, I mean, I'm spamming nukes. You don't want to do this typically. We're just trying to get through this and demonstrate the, the video. Right now, he's doing the healing power where he spawns dogs, spectral dogs from Blood of the Dead, which kill you in one hit, which, which also regenerates his health. So just be patient with this guy. He could also lunge pretty far. Sometimes it's helpful to uh, backtrack a bit so that, you know, you could sort of have uh, some distance. Okay, very well, he's dead. My teammate, unfortunately, is who knows where in the lava. Working my way up. 
So you don't need your teammate to be here, luckily. We can show off that it uh, teleports you when you enter areas in the wild, I guess. So you're going to drop down here to enter the room of fate. We got a free life here. So basically, like I said, if you feed that altar, these stones will have distinguishable patterns. Unfortunately, we didn't get lucky with the keys. So these fates are going to be pretty standard looking. And also right now, there's only four fate rocks, even though there's six fates. So we have randomly generated fates here, basically. It could be feet, firepower, bird, chalice, or any combination of the, the four of the six. So there might be an update to where two more stones are added, maybe one right here and one right there. So we got to wait for that to potentially happen in the future. But we're just going to pick a, a fate at random. I got the eternal friendship, not exactly an ideal fate. My teammate got also another <laughs> terrible fate. So this is a game that we would restart, unfortunately, because we didn't get key luck, uh, key luck to reveal the fates. And we're still sort of working out the pattern of the fates as well. So like I said, room of fate guide might be a bit delayed. Uh, any final words, Rios? Uh, no, not that I can think of. <laughs> Okay, so we won't be able to enter the wild again after round 20 if you do this. But I figured I'd share this little uh, tutorial, I guess, or walkthrough of getting to the room of fate after round 4, which is an intended feature and a semi-shortcut. Anyways, don't forget to like the video if this helped you. Thanks for watching.